Hey, it's Damien from Marketing Food Online. So in this video, I'm gonna give you nine different ways that you can actually create a business model relating to food. I'm gonna break down nine really easy ways that you can actually create a food product and get it into the hands of your customers. Now, if you're not really familiar with these, I'm gonna break down each one of them and we're gonna get to it right now. All right, so as I mentioned in the introduction, I'm really excited to bring you these nine different ways to actually sell a packaged food product. So if you're trying to think to yourself, well, Damien, what is a way that I could sell a product and I, can I only do it from home? Can I sell it through the internet? Can I get it into a food distributor? Can I get it into retail stores? There are tons of different ways that you could actually get your packaged food product into the hands of your customers. And I'm gonna go through nine of them. But before I do, as always, if this is your first video, please hit that subscribe button. We've got over 800 free videos for you to get your food business up and running, get a food truck started, or even get a packaged food product online or in retail stores. And we're really excited. Uh, by the way, this is our first video that we can actually do the introduction for. We have Marketing Food Online services now. So if you're looking to create a website and you need help finding the domain name, getting hosting for your website, and a ton of other products, definitely check down below in the description section. We have a brand new website set up that offers all of these services and they are super ultra inexpensive because I know how it costs a lot of money to get a food business going. So I wanted to give you guys a really great edge up on your online business. So let's get into this really quick, this list. Now these are in no particular order, none of, of in importance or any of that sort. So definitely just go through and listen to all the way through the number nine so you can figure out which one may work best for you or pair up a couple of them together. So the first one is, the business model is you can actually make your product and send it to your customers. Now, this is the most simplistic and easiest way to do this. If you wanna produce the product and actually just simply make it to order, the way this works is you get the order off of your store, if it happens to be eBay, Etsy, Amazon, or wherever it may be, you make the product itself only as it comes in and then ship it out to the customer. Now, this does a few things. This is actually the business model that I operate today. We do not make or pre-make anything other than products that we have in Amazon FBA. But aside from that, the products that we make and we fulfill for our customers are actually made to order. So if you order a product from one of our websites, we immediately get into action. We print up the shipping label, make the product, put it in a box and get it out to the customer. So this business model is something that really cuts down on waste. You don't have a lot of employees on hand all the time, may have to have increase whenever you have a peak moment or you have a peak season, you may have to bring a few people on to help you out. But this is the type of business where at least you could start very small and fill the order as it comes in. And that way you're not throwing out a lot of product. You're not having to get a lot of ingredients at first. You don't have to stockpile a bunch of labels and products and bags and everything. You can simply make it and ship it out to the customer. So made to order business model is the first one. Now, the next one is you can make a product and ship it to what's known as a fulfillment center. Now, what is a fulfillment center, Damien? Because I'm really new at this. Well, you make the product and it has to be pretty much shelf stable, of course. Make the product, you ship it to a warehouse that's called a fulfillment center. From there, they actually will warehouse the product and they will fulfill the orders for you. So if you have a business online, this would be an e-commerce way of doing business, is that the order comes in, let's say through your eBay store, your fulfillment center will pull the product, box it and ship it to the customer for you. Now, the only couple drawbacks is of course, that costs a little bit more per transaction every single time that they have a fulfillment order go out through them, they're gonna charge you for it. Now. These prices can range anywhere from about two to three dollars per actual product being pulled or up to four or five dollars. There's a lot of variations that come into play as far as the weight of the product, where it's being shipped, the type of shipping service, and the fees that the, the actual fulfillment center will charge you. But creating a product, shipping it to a fulfillment center relieves you of having to do all the logistics and shipping and the customer service end of it. Now, of course, Amazon is really, really known for its FBA program because if that's fulfillment by Amazon, they have the warehousing capability and the logistical uh, capability to ship tons of products. So can you tap into them? Most definitely. Do I recommend other fulfillment centers? You can do that as well. Shop around, check the pricing and see who works best because you've got to keep in mind not every single fulfillment center is gonna operate the same as each other, okay? 
So next up, you got a co-packer who makes and ships to retailers or ships it to the stores. Now, this is number three. So how does this work? Well, you actually find a co-packer who will make the product for you, and they're gonna produce thousands of units. Then they will ship it either to the retail warehouse where the retailer will then take it and work it through their logistical center and ship it out to all of their different stores or grocery stores or retail stores, whoever that may be. But the idea is really, really simple. The co-packer produces the product for you. You direct the co-packer to ship it to that destination, wherever that may be, and then you're done with it. So you're not actually producing the product yourself. This is another type of business model. If you wanna create a really efficient food business model, this is one that works very well if you wanted to get into a lot of stores and have the stores handle the distribution of the product in their system. So you're not shipping out to 500 different stores at the same time. You simply have the co-packer ship it to their warehouse where they direct you to go, and then it gets distributed to all of the stores. So number four, co-packer makes, then sends it to a food distributor. Now, this is a little bit different. This is where a co-packer would produce, let's just say, 5,000 units of your salsa, and they ship it to a food distributor's warehouse. Now, what is a food distributor, Damien? Because I'm still new at this. A food distributor is a company that warehouses thousands of food products. Then from there, retailers like grocery stores or even Ross or Marshall, even retail stores that actually sell food products, they're going to come to this food distributor and buy that product. And that food distributor then is going to ship it to them. Now, the only drawback to this is that you're going to have a cost for the co-packer. When you ship it to a food distributor, they're going to also look at it as a reduced price. You're going to have to come down on your pricing because from there, the food distributor has to have a margin for themselves because then they sell it to the retailer, then the retailer marks it up. Now, is this good for a small food startup? As far as profitability is concerned, I personally would say no. You need to kind of scale yourself to the point where you're going to have a co-packer make the product in such a quantity that it's going to go to even a food distributor and you're still going to be profitable. So keep that in mind. Number five, the co-packer makes the product then sells it to a, sends it to a fulfillment center to sell online. Sorry about that. So you have an online business. So you have a product that co-packer can produce the product for you, or even you could produce a product, send it to the fulfillment center, and then the product gets sold online and they do the fulfillment for you, okay? So that is another way that you could do it. That's something that's on a smaller scale because that way, unless your online business is selling thousands of units, you can actually do a couple hundred, even a few hundred units on a small scale and have the fulfillment center do that for you through your online stores. Now, you can actually integrate some of these fulfillment centers with your store on eBay, your store on Etsy, Amazon, if it's walmart.com, if it's your Shopify store, all of these can be brought together so all of those sales are automated. So these fulfillment centers can do the fulfillment for you. Number six, so you can make, sell locally, lo locally at farmer's markets or even retail stores or other restaurants. Now, this would fall under the cottage food law. So this is a great way to start from home and you make the product and basically just do it locally. This is the festivals, farmer's markets, maybe food truck events, food events, whatever it may be in your area, even sporting events or outdoor events, whatever it may be. But that's something where you can make it at home and sell it locally. That's always a good way to start. And most food businesses actually start that way, believe it or not. Now, number seven, this is the one where you're not gonna be making anything. You can actually buy food in bulk and simply resell it online. Now, when I say simply resell it online, there's a few things you gotta think about. You gotta make sure that you're in a facility that's licensed and inspected by um, either the health department or the USDA, okay? And these are this would be a gigantic warehouse or some large warehouse facility where you would actually warehouse these products, you would inventory them, and you would go online and you could resell them. You basically mark them up and sell them. But make sure you do this not out of your house. Make sure you do this out of a facility that's properly licensed and make sure you have your business licenses. Make sure you have your EIN number, your sales tax certificate, and everything else you need from the state, the county, and city to do this. But in essence, this is a lot of ways of how even Walmart does it. These are how retail grocery stores do it. They just simply buy from either a food distributor or a food manufacturer. They put it on their shelves and they resell it. You can do the exact same thing online and resell food products that way. Okay. Now, number eight, you can buy food in bulk and then sell it through subscription food business. Now, this is really interesting and something that's definitely extremely popular right now. But the idea is very, very simple as well. 
buying a whole bunch of food products, you can either kind of culminate them, bring, curate them, bring them together, put them into a box and sell them as a subscription box, which every single month, you're getting a reoccurring payment from your subscribers or customers. So you buy a bunch of, let's just say snack bars, let's say even protein bars, you can create a protein subscription box. So you buy all kinds of brands, you take them out of the boxes where you've got individual bars and you can sell 10, 12, 14 bars at a time. So every month, your customer through the subscription business is going to get an assortment of protein bars. So that way you can literally go into a medium size or even small warehouse. You don't have to have a lot of space to do this. But again, make sure you follow the laws and you've got the right licenses and, and the permits to do it. And food business insurance, by the way. Even if you're not making a product and you're reselling it, I highly recommend you get food business insurance. Now, by the way, really quick, down below in the description section below this video, there's a ton more resources. You can even check out our website and all of these other inf information I'm talking about specifically in this video. There's more information down below. So food subscription business, that is another one. So number nine and final one, you can make the product, warehouse it, and ship it as it sells. Now, what does this mean? Well, you yourself could actually have your, your own warehouse. If you produced a certain amount of products, okay, this is not a made to order concept. This would be like, I'm gonna produce four or 500 units, but I'm not gonna ship it to a distribution center. I'm not gonna ship it to a retailer. I'm just gonna have it in my warehouse. I'm gonna have my online business, sell it as it sells down. I'll make some more of it. And then that way you keep your inventory um, level at all times that you've got an opportunity to fill your orders. But again, you're not having any type of co-packer. You're not having a fulfillment center. You're producing it. You produce small batches of it, warehouse it in your facility and ship it to your customer as it sells. Why would I do this? Why would I want to do this, Damien? Well, because what you can do is control the amount of inventory and the amount of money that you have invested in the inventory. So let's say you made five or 600 units of a product and you sell down and you've got about 100 units left. And that, that point, you can begin to produce more of it and then replenish your inventory. So that way you're not always making it to order. That way you're not making 10,000 units and it's just sitting there. You simply keep a medium amount of inventory on hand. And as you sell down, you can produce more of it. So you're not relying on a co-packer. You're not relying on a fulfillment center. And that is another way that you can have a food business model. So that is nine profitable food business models, different ways that you can actually sell a food product that's packaged either online or in retail stores or even do it yourself. And if this was helpful as always, please let us know down below. And if you've got questions on how this actually works, let me know. And again, check out marketingfoodonline.com. We have tons of other free resources, blogs and services and all kinds of good stuff on there. And I'll see you guys on our next video. Thanks for watching Marketing Food Online. And if you are looking to create your own food truck, start a home-based food business under the Cottage Food Law, franchise a food operation, start a packaged food business, private label your own food product, sell on Amazon, get your own online store or sell food online, remember to subscribe and check out these videos for more resources.